Hello everyone. So today I wanted to talk about setting up multiple interfaces. Um, this is something that I've struggled with in the past and have been very frustrated with for the, maybe the last year or so trying to figure this stuff out. But um, right now I have my, my setup that I have here right now. I have it pretty much well, well figured out to the point where I can troubleshoot everything. Um, and I figured I wanted to I wanted to share this info because this is pretty valuable stuff here. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Um, how do you connect multiple interfaces? Now, if you have the exact same interface but multiple units of it, um, all of the interfaces can run off the one program on your computer, and things are pretty smooth when you're when you're doing it that way. So basically, let's say if you had these um, multiple units of the uh, UR824 by Steinbergs, these ones are USB. Um, you don't daisy chain them within the units, but you plug all of them into your computer. And then this device here, it should recognize all of the uh, different interfaces. If it doesn't, then don't worry because um, there's always a way to connect via optical outputs and inputs and that's called ADAT and uh, you can do that with pretty much any device but either way um, it's a lot more streamlined all you do is you plug them into the computer it talks to the computer the uh, the program is used to talk back to the interface and then your uh, interface will usually have some sort of um, driver like an audio driver and then with within the audio driver is how you can select within your DAW what goes on and you can select the samples and all that kind of crap um, within it. So that's all fun and uh, fine and dandy. With the Sapphire Pro 40 and the ProFire 2626 these are both FireWire units so for the Focusrite I know you can set up two together I think maybe you can set up three together um, but what you do is you just firewire daisy chain them and then they will talk to uh, your Sapphire Mix Control program here and with this program you can talk to each one of your Sapphire Mix uh, Sapphire Pro 40s. Now with the uh, ProFire 2626 it has its own program as well you have a mixer and routing options and whatnot and exact same way as you just daisy chain with the firewire um, from unit to unit and then as, as long as one of those units is plugged into the computer all of them will cross talk and talk with each other and then you're uh, good to go now if you're like myself and you have multiple different interfaces uh, you're still gonna have to connect each one of the interfaces to your computer so that it can talk to them uh, the Steinberg one here, I have a USB that plugs directly via USB. And these two interfaces are FireWire um, interfaces. Now, since my computer only has one uh, FireWire input, what I can do is I can daisy chain this second FireWire uh, interface, daisy chain that into my first FireWire interface, and then send that one and plug that one into my single FireWire input on my computer and in that way all three of the interfaces are plugged into and connected to the computer so as it stands right now everything's connected but when you open up a program like Cubase or Ableton Live it's gonna ask you to use one audio driver now each of these interfaces has their own respective driver their own audio driver and their own program and it's going to ask you which one of those you want to use and you can only use one so basically you have to select which one is going to be your main one and that's the one the uh, the audio driver that you want to use um, but in this way you can't have access to all your audio inputs and outputs from your other interfaces the only workaround to this is if you go with um, what's called an ASIO for all uh, if you search for that ASIO as an ASIO driver and then for the number four and ALL all search for that and you'll find a, uh, a kind of workaround for Windows 
And what that does is you get to assign all of the different audio interfaces into one audio driver, and that's the audio driver that you can use in Cubase and other programs. So in that way, you can talk to each one and send audio files in and out from all your interfaces. But I don't like using that. It's not quite as stable as I want it to be. So what I do is I use the ADAT optical outputs and inputs from all my interfaces, and I connect in that way. So the basic rundown is that each one of these channels, each one of these little things here, the ins and the outs, can either send or receive either 8 channels of 44.1 or 48 kilohertz, or they can send and receive 4 channels of 88.2 or 96 kilohertz um, audio channels. So you have to decide how many channels you want to be sending and receiving for each of your ADAT inputs and outputs, and that is pretty much going to decide which of the different sample rates that you can run at. So for myself, I'm trying to get 24 outputs, 24 audio outputs. I'm going to be trying to maximize as many channels. That means I'm going to use uh, the maximum amount from both of my ADAT optical outputs, my A and B, the two different banks. That means I'm going to have 16 channels of audio coming from each of these, and it's it has to be either 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. So that's something you need to know. Um, the other thing is you have inputs and you have outputs. I'm using the Steinberg as my main interface, and it is going to be sending eight channels of audio from my ADAT optical A bank. It's going out and into my Sapphire Pro 40 on the optical inputs. From there, my Sapphire Pro 40 is going to, to uh, convert them. It's going to convert them into eight different audio outputs, which I then use. In my second bank here, on bank B, this goes eight channels of digital audio out, uh, and then into my uh, Profire 2626 ADAT optical input receives it as a digital uh, eight channels of digital audio it converts it into eight channels of analog audio and I have access to those eight channels of analog audio so it's quite a mouth mouthful but anyways that gives me my full 24 channels of analog outputs the other way to do this is to use um, SPDIF coaxial. And SPDIF is a similar thing to ADAT. It's a digital form of audio signal. However, it's only going to send and receive, I think, up to two channels of audio. So it's not as, it doesn't have as many channels as ADAT optical. Um, and there's a couple of other different uh, kinds of uh, digital and analog sending and receiving type of stuff like this but ADAT optical is a very uh, very popular one and most interfaces have it all right so now you want to sync all of your interfaces together and first you have to select a master interface and I've chosen the uh, Steinberg UR 824 secondly you have to set up your main clock source and if you don't know what a clock source or clocking device is, then do just a quick Google search and you'll probably find quite a lot about uh, quite a lot of information about it. But basically, the clock source is what's going to communicate to all the different audio devices and keep all of them uh, synced up with one another because it's using one source and that one source is telling each of the devices when the audio starts and when the audio stops and at what sample rate and all these different things. So basically, if you have an external clocking device, you have to connect that external clocking device to all of your different uh, audio interfaces and audio devices. And you can do that by connecting either your word clock, which is a BNC connector, I think is what it's called, or you can connect via ADAT, optical inputs and outputs, or you can connect via SPDIF. There's a 
there's multiple different kinds of ways of connecting um, clocking to uh, to your audio devices. Now, for me, I have word clock on two of these devices. There's actually a word clock on this thing here. You can see that's the uh, it says right here word clock. It has like a little connector with the word clock on it. These two interfaces have word clock, and this one only has SPDIF and optical. Now my main clocking device does not have SPDIF, it only has ADAT and only has word clock. So the word clock I'm using from the Steinberg, I hook the word clock up to my um, ProFire 2626. So this is now connected to my main clock source. And because I'm you already using my ADAT uh, into my FireWire, I'm using this one here, the ADAT, as my uh, clock source. Now I don't know exactly for sure if this ADAT is properly clocking, um, but I can tell you right now that I do have the ability to change my sample rates, and thus far, right now, I have pretty much no issues at all. So I'm thinking that the ADAT is uh, working quite fine.